Hi there folks, Rich Burdess from Brighter Days in Christchurch with a quick step through tutorial of how to use Power Automate to filter list of library items by the author of that content. If you've ever tried to filter a SharePoint get items um, or get files by metadata, you'll notice that you can use OData to filter. Um, but if you try and use the created by column, it can be a bit fiddly, um, simply being that the, it's called author to start off with in the, in the SharePoint um, actual columns that they have to the system name for it. And it's also a lookup. It's a lookup to the user information list, which is a unique list per site collection that you're on. And it contains a list of all the, the users that have access to that site or have had access. And it's called the user information list. And everyone on that list has their own ID, which is different to a like a user ID or UPN or an email address. It does contain your email address, but it's you'll have a number like seven rather than you know something with your email address in, which can make it a bit confusing. So let's step through how we're going to do this. Three steps to do it in Power Automate. First of all, we're going to use an HTTP request to SharePoint to look up and filter the user information list on that site collection to get the ID of the person that I want. Then we're going to compose the output of that HTTP request to get just the ID as an integer of the user from that list. And then we're going to filter the SharePoint list and get items call by that variable or item we've created from the compose statement. All right, so let's step into it and show you how this will look. OK. Uh, right -o. So to show you, first of all, it can be any trigger you like. Um, there's a send HTTP request to SharePoint call. Uh, well this is our uh, tenant here. The information you'll want is API with, I'll put this into um, the comments below as well, basically, but API list, get, get the list item by the title, uh, and it's user information list with percent to any split spaces. And then you can then s just grab the ID. I'm just selecting the ID um, in this piece here. You need to um, have select something and it's better to select something smaller than everything uh, depending on how big your list is and then I'm filtering by this column here in the user information list called email with capital E capital M uh, and then me and then I'm also using the O data call of no metadata in response back just to save uh, the information and I'll get back from that list um, and so to show you what that looks like when it's run Okay, so it's, we're just basically using a get, there's the same all, get to no metadata, and then the information I get back is just the two IDs, because I've only requested the ID, but there are two IDs in there, but they're both the same, um, and that's the information we get back. So we've got this in an object, um, not quite an array at this point, um, but we don't need it to be an array, we just need it to be an object, and then if I jump back into the compose statement, what we do, if I show you actually what the compose is going to get, it's just going to get input 7, output 7, the ID, that's all I want, that bit. So it just gives me a 7, gives me an integer which I can then use in this SharePoint filter author ID, author slash ID equals 7. Okay, T to show you what that piece is all about, um, if we go up to get items, this is ID2, but don't worry about it, the ID piece. Um, you've got author that comes through from the created by column, but doesn't give you an ID there, um, and the ID doesn't exist. It's a lookup back to the user information list. This is why it gets a bit tricky. If you ever try and just do a filter in OData, author, EQ, which should, it's not doing that, it won't work. Because um, if you ever look at the rest with return back from here, author is blank. Um, but if you expand author, you can get into the ID and the name email that lives in the user information list. So let's step through the compose piece. So we've got send HTTP request to SharePoint, that piece in the body. Now, my screen's a little small here, but we basically, if I leave my um, mouse hovering over here, I'll show this in, in a second as I want to as well. But basically we are, composing just to get 
body of the send HTTP request to SharePoint item, which is the action just before this. Uh, because that returns back in a, in an object, the first item in the object is value, and then we want ID. But because it's an object, we want to get the first item that comes back, just in case. Um, if you try and use first or something here, it's not going to work. But you want to use, uh, if I click that, you want to use the zero to get the very first item. Sending the user information list is unique to each user, and if you're filtering by the user's email address, they should be unique as well. So you only get one return back. Um, if you've got more than one, you need to put it into an array, but you should only ever get one. And therefore, it's the send request to SharePoint value zero ID. Just to show you why we're using value, let's go back to my run history. Uh, let me scroll down. That's the value. And that's the ID. So we've got to nest from value down to get the seven. And then we want the first item in this in case it forms up an array. It shouldn't do, but just in case it does, that's the flow won't let or automate won't let you run it unless you've got something like that in there. So it's value, the first, and then ID that it finds. Okay, so then we've got this base statement sorted. And then author ID EQ output. And it's as simple as that to get all of the items that you might have you want to filter on. So you can use this flow for um, you know, sending out and possibly automated emails for a user. So look up the ones that have been created by that user and then send out a message to them. Do have the sorts of things that you might want to do for that. Um, let's say and then ID seven get by seven and my outputs and give me all my examples. Okay. And I'm just terminating that flow there just for fun, just because I don't need it to run and do anything else. Um, so as simple as that, if you can remember author slash IQ, ID, sorry, um, and then user compose after an HTTP request with a just select filter and then make sure you use O data, no metadata, because that will save you a lot of information. You don't all you get is that back. You don't get heaps of other stuff. It's just big time saver. I hope that's helped. Um, any questions, please ask in the comments. Um, I'll post the strings for the get request and the compose re request as well in, in the comments. So just, yeah, any questions, please ask. Thank you.